The following bout is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bell of Featherweight Division. Introducing first, the man standing to my right and fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at an even 145 pounds. He is a grappler with a record of 12 victories, opposite seven defeats, fighting out of Leeds, England. James the Thai Guy Samurai Seville. The opposition comes in the form of the man standing across the cage to my left and fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet seven inches tall. His official weight, 145 and one half pounds. He is a striker with a record of seven victories opposite a single defeat fighting out of Paris, France. Tom Firekid Duquesnois. Your referee, Mark Goddard. Frank, do you think it forges a certain type of mental spirit when all your fights are away? You're the away fighter, you've got to go away from home. You must have a certain type of tough mental attitude. Everything's on the road. No matter what happens, you're, you're always the road warrior no matter what goes on. And you get used to traveling, that's for sure. You get used to being around and, and having to get, get, your, get your, your, your spacing and your timing and, and how to eat in foreign countries and how to navigate, you know, especially in a foreign language. It, it makes it very simple when it's time to come and do battle. Well, he certainly started very lively. He's got inside the taller man, which is the right thing to do, and he was having the best of the early exchanges till Savile started to get those knees in. And I think that's what he needs to do is the shorter man getting close and inside the taller man's range. And yet, really, Savile just needs to keep it there, doesn't he? Savile doing a good job right now, at least keeping distance. That's right, he's the taller man. He can keep him in his range. And the, the fire kid's really got to get in close and, and quickly to stay out of range there. He's either got to be right out or right in. Wow, good body shot, good change up with his hands. Oh, spinning kick miss, but then he followed with the, the left leg. Oh, oh but a short rocked. right, though. That short right rocked him. He got caught on the inside. You see, he slowed down a little bit. And that uppercut almost landed as well, just out of range. The lad from Paris, but he is closing the gap as quickly as he can, and it's a good tactic to get inside his man, but at a left to land his own, and then for the first time, they tie up. And I think both men had their fair share up right there, Frank. They're doing a good job right now, pushing the pace, and both guys are getting, getting their best techniques off and getting their exchanges in. And now it's the first time we're actually seeing Tom really, really push Savile against the cage and uses, uses his short height to kind of hold his position. Head underneath the chin, pushing him up a little bit, leaning onto him. Short Much elbow position. there as well. Yeah. Very good, very good at this point. Savile doing a good job of keeping that back, but again, three short elbows, Jeez, explosive, quick. this young Frenchman. Quick on the inside, fast with his, his hands and feet, just amazing so far, but right now he's just been out of range a little bit. Let's see what happens now if he gets us to the ground. And that left hand. Oh, oh that's it. it. He set it up with one front yeah. and the second was an incredible left hand. Wow, I thought for sure that was done. Savile, great job of coming back in and getting inside and recovering. Spending some time recovering. Look at him locking in now so he can't get hit to the head. He's got to buy time to clear that head because that left hook landed so flush. Good position. Man, that, that is that was incredible recovery time. I thought for sure it was going to be over because the way he got put down. His entire body dropped, landed on his back. The nose is bleeding. That's to be expected. But as you said, all credit to Savile. Took that well. Still thinking, still working. But as the shorter man, the explosive man, Tom has really fought the right fight at the moment, hasn't he? He has, he really has. And as you can see, a dynamic movement from him again, side control, and really, Savile needs to buy as much time as possible. He's still just under two minutes left, a long time. But like you, Frank, I'm still impressed by the fact he took that shot, and he's still Corpus Mentis. Yeah, I mean, really, most guys, I thought for sure the fight, like I said, I thought it was over. He Came back, he's recovered fully now at this point, and he's able to get in a position, but now he's in a he's in a spot where he laid to recover and held on. Now he's in a position now where he's got to get up and get moving. Yes, he's got to watch those short chopping elbows from the young man from Paris here. 
Tom doing a good job of changing positions, keeping the pressure on. Well, if I was Tom, I'd be quite happy with it upright because he's shown he's, he's got sharp punches, he's got the short elbows. He's found his range. Staying inside, staying deep. He's not, he's not allowing to get caught with too many things at this point now, and Sabo's got to worry about everything at this position. Why, why do you jump guard there? I'm not really sure. Why would he jump against the cage, put yourself against the cage and jump guard? doesn't oh, really make that much of a position. You preempted my question, Frank. I didn't understand that. I was just about to say to you, why would he do that? It doesn't really make any sense because he put himself in a worse position. He was just getting leaned on, but he's on his feet. At least he had still had some kind of maneuver, new maneuverability. At this point, he put his head against the cage. He has nothing. Well, for me as well, it, it puts an exclamation mark on the round for Tom because I feel he's done enough to take this. And, and by that strange maneuver, he's given him the opportunity to finish strong as well. And yeah, now it's, it's, a, it's a position now where in the last 20 seconds or so, Seba has no hope of, of winning this round. All he can do now is, if, is get out of this alive. It's, it is a re really strange position to try to jump guard at that point. Oh, and there's that elbow again. Just as he tried to throw the left, the left elbow from Tom came in and caught him clean again. And I've been impressed with his work. His timing's been very good as well. He's kept it on the inside. And as you said, Frank, he's kept himself mainly safe doing it as well. He really has. He's, he's in a position now where he's in so tight. And a, and a good throwdown right there at the end. I mean, he's he took full dominance of this of this round. He's in a position where he was on the outside, getting caught with outside shots. All of a sudden, now he's on the inside. He's dominating the entire fight. He, he really did a great job of winning. Catches a quick little hip hip kick right there, but it steps, he gets stepped in. Tom comes through and bangs him with that heavy overhand right, or excuse me, left, and puts him down on the canvas. It's a great position. Do you know what, though, Frank? After seeing that left in slow motion, I've got even more respect for Savile still being there. Yeah, Savile's for sure should have been put away. And even now, he's still taking elbows to the head. Earlier, there was three elbows thrown right in the middle of the first round. He threw three elbows right against the cage and hit him, and that was right there at the end of the first round. He's getting beat up pretty bad for a guy that, that, that at the very beginning, the first 30 seconds or so of the round, was, was pretty much dominating it by getting back backpedaling and getting out of the way and, and maneuvering. It seemed to me that he lost his movement. While he was moving and, and sort of moving laterally, he kept on where he needed him, but the moment that stopped, he was on him like a rash. He was right there, and once it got close, his shot choice was superb, I felt. Yeah, it's perfect timing, good position, very, very smart about where he's putting his hands, very, very smart about where he lays everything in. He doesn't take too many risks with his punching. Every punch so far, it seems to be landing flush. And that's a very difficult test to teach anybody. Now, at range, I feel that Savile's got the tools, but he's got to keep it there. As we saw there, he's technically very good. He's just got to keep it at that range. Got to throw punches at him to keep him out, and as he's charging in, you got to keep throwing punches and kicks at him to keep him away from you. That's it, and moving again, keep moving, moving laterally, moving round his man, because I, the, um, the French lad has got such confidence at the moment, and rightly so after a first round like that, and he closes the gap again. And he is so good close in range. But this is better, I feel, from Savile, moving, a couple of good body shots there, keeping the distance between them. And as we saw there, nice right hand, left leg. He's got good technical ability, and he's on his bike, which I think is necessary after seeing what the Frenchman can do up close, but he's chopping at that lead leg, and that right hand is a danger once more. He's leaning into the punches now, so he's getting, he's putting himself inside the range, as opposed to just throwing straight punches and staying on the outside. He was leaning in there for a minute. He's getting caught again. You can see his nose is still leaking. This is this is not a very good position for him. He's got to get just another half step of, of space and use the end of his punches. That's just right. like he did there. And I think the, a, a low shot there that they'll give him time to recover from. But we can see just from those exchanges that if he uses it. Savile's got the tools of the trade to keep it there, but it's, it's that focus and, and keeping it in that range. So Tom de Questnoy just been given time to recover and he's ready now, he's saying, trying to get the crowd going on his side. He said always having to fight in a foreign country. This is better from Savile, moves in, throws his punches, moves back out. But he's, moving, he's still moving straight in and out. He's got to take a little half step to the left or right. That's right, it is straight line work from him. But at least the range is slightly better, but he's always at risk from the power punches. And that chopping kick to the lead leg of Savile. And I like the way Tom, he almost lures you in, doesn't he? Suddenly, Savile finds himself the man as the aggressor when he doesn't want to be. 
good good position change of you know being aggressive, being aggressive, and then stopping and kind of taking a half step back and, and or a full step back and making you chase him, and then he comes right back at you again. Nice spin there from Savile, but it's out of range. And there's the lateral movement from Tom that we feel that Savile could do with. And then when he gets in close, he really picks shot and those low kicks to the lead leg are beginning to take their toll on Savile, who for the first time goes for the takedown, and he's having none of it. It's almost the worst position for him now. Well, we've seen this twice with him when he's gone for his takedown attempts. One was quite spectacular, but even that one, it doesn't work for him at the moment. That's been the problem for him. Oh, he walked into a shot. He got, took a knee to the face as he's trying to get that takedown. And for me, this is the difference between the two fighters, the tactical choices they're making. They're working for one. They're certainly not for the other. The question is, he wants nothing to do with it on the ground. He wants to keep it on his feet as much as he can. He doesn't yes. land some heavy shots right here. I have a feeling he'll just back out of the way out again. That's right. Savile looking, as, as you said, for that grand game because it's been torrid for him upright. The, the shot choices, the decisions he made have cost wow. him. And these short elbows are costing him again. Working the body and head now. Look at the action. The question look, look at how much he's doing on top. He, he's staying active. None of those were, were super hard, heavy, powerful shots taking energy away from him. They're, they're all... Whoa! What an uppercut. But as you said, Frank, I want to pick up on something you said earlier. He's dictating the choices as well, isn't he? You said he, he won't stay down there long, and he didn't. He, he wants to put it in a particular space. He wants to fight. And we were talking about earlier to some of these guys, like, like if you want to be a striker, you got to find a way to keep it on your feet. This guy's a striker. He found a way to keep it on his feet by being a good wrestler as well. Defensively, a good wrestler. Doesn't have any kind of offense. Just needs to keep it. If it ends up on the ground, then he ends up on top. And he doesn't want to go there. He'll hit a couple punches, get, get a little bit of ground and pound in, hit with a couple elbows, and then back out all the way and stand up again. I mean, at the moment, when, when you're clutching at straws, one thing you can say about Savile in this fight is just how durable he is. It's, it's not winning him the fight, but he is such a durable young man. I mean, he's been given every opportunity to be stopped here, and I think this could be it. There it is. Mark Goddard's seen enough, Frank. So, total control of that fight by Tom the Fire Kid de Cusnoy from France. Dominated the range, controlled the fight from every angle. James Scrap Savile, as we saw, was very durable. But when it came to this final ground and pound, Mark Goddard saw enough with those downward elbows chopping in to the side of the face. And you saw him actually look up at the referees to say, are you going to stop this? And he did. Total control here. That's the uppercut that started it all. Really got Savile's attention, got him backing off, chopping at that lead leg as he did right through the fight. Total control, superb performance by the young man from Paris, France. Yes, James scrapped Savile, very durable, but it wasn't enough tonight. And there's those downward elbows that finish the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard holds the bout at four minutes, four seconds of the second round due to excessive strikes. Your winner by technical knockout, Tom Firekid Duquenois. All right, wow, what a great fight, amazing fight. Did you think the fight was over when you hit him in the corner and dropped him with that first overhand left? Uh, can you repeat the question?
Did you think you had the, Did you think you had him done when you hit him with the overhand left in the corner in the very beginning? Yeah, I think so, but uh, he's a tough guy, so uh, he didn't, didn't knock out at this moment. When did you realize that you finally were starting to take over the fight and with complete dominance? Because at some point it was kind of a little change in your attitude and how you attacked. You started getting faster and quicker with everything because it seemed like you realized he was starting to fall off. He's a tough guy, so uh, every moment uh, I know I'm dominating, but uh, I don't know uh, he was out, but uh, there's no count pro of it. Uh, I know he was touched, but not knockout, so it was enough to continue the fight. There, uh, when you were throwing those elbows onto his head, right in the very beginning of the first time you took him down, you started hitting him, did you realize that those were going to work for the entire rest of the fight? Because it seemed like that was your best finishing position by the end of it. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't understand your question, but I can tell you to pass this interview that uh, next time I would like to fight for the championship belt, please. I like it. Let's, you guys want to see him fight for the belt next time? Good work, you're winner, time to say.